Thank you very much. Now tonight, it's a great privilege for me to be here again in Indianapolis and in Indiana. And we say, God bless all of you that have worked so hard and prayed so much and believed that God was going to bring renewal, not only in the city, Our whole country needs spiritual renewal from coast to coast and from the Great Lakes to the Gulf. We need a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God and that will come only in answer to prayer. And I find that some of the problems that we face in city after city that we go to, you are beginning to have here. And the answer to those problems is not economic, it's spiritual. Tonight I want you to turn with me to two passages of scripture. The first one is found in the first chapter of Genesis, in the first verse that all of you know. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's a strange thing, that just in a few words, God tells us that how the whole universe was created. Not just this galaxy, which is the Milky Way, but hundreds of thousands of galaxies with billions of planets and stars that those on the Discovery can see just only a part of tonight as they look out the windows of the spacecraft. What a, what a, this is an, such an amazing verse. And then I want you to turn me to another verse that may be more familiar with you. The 16th in 17th verses of the third chapter of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. God has not come to condemn us He's come to save us because he loves us and we need to open our hearts to him. All the Star Wars movies start, I'm told, with the words a long time ago in a, gal a galaxy far, far away. And tonight I just read to you a passage a far, far away, a long time ago, when God created this planet and all the life that's on it, including man. And the very first verse says, in the beginning, God. Just in the beginning, God. He doesn't go into a long explanation of how it was made. He doesn't go to a class at the university and explain it in some very deep scientific books. He just says a simple statement. In the beginning, God. And we look at our world today and we see the disease, the poverty, the war, the racism, and that's one of the things I want to emphasize I'm here while I'm here. We must bring our people together, no matter what the color of their skins.
And there, there's still, there's a, still a lot of racist feelings down underneath the surface. And there's hate, as we saw in Columbine High School, killings, and the loneliness, and the boredom, and the psychological problems, and AIDS, and murder statistics, and divorce, and moral problems. Suicide is on the increase, but suicide is no solution. You know why? Because you cannot kill yourself. Because you cannot kill your soul. The real you is your soul, your spirit, that indwells your body. You can die, your body can die, but not your soul, not your spirit. For God so loved the world. No, I can't prove the existence of God. You cannot put God in a test tube or put him on a computer screen, but that doesn't mean he's not real. The Bible tells us that he is the creator of the whole universe. And everything the four men and three women aboard the spacecraft out there are watching right now was created by God. You know what the Bible says about God? The Bible says that God is a spirit. In John, the fourth chapter says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says that God is a God of judgment. The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die and after that the judgment. The Bible says you are going to die. Whoever you are, you're going to die. The Bible says that God will bring every work into judgment and every hidden thing. All the thoughts that you've had that have been bad will all be there. The Bible says when you stand before God, you will stand alone. And he'll have a record of every thought that you ever thought. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The Bible says every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account in the day of judgment in Matthew 12, 36. He's appointed a day. The Bible says in Acts 17 that he's appointed a day in which he will judge the world. A day. Have you ever thought about being prepared for death? And I want to ask you, are you prepared? The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. On the morning of April 20th, when the students left home to go to school at Columbine High, they never dreamed that some of them would not be coming home again. Like other young people and women of their age, they had great dreams for their lives. They thought about their careers. They thought about who they'll marry. But those young people in Columbine and other places never entertained the thought that they wouldn't live to see their dreams fulfilled. According to the Boston Globe on the night after she was killed in Littleton, Colorado, 17-year-old Casey Bar Burnell, his brother, found something she had written just two days before. I'm going to read it to you. But you remember, she was the one that when the killer Ask if anybody here believes in God. She stood up and said, I believe in God. And that... And she was shot right there. And here's what she wrote two days before that. I'm going to read it to you. Now I have given up on everything else. I've found it to be the only way, and that's to know Christ and to experience the mighty power that brought him back to life again, and to find out what it means to suffer and to die with him. So whatever it takes, I will be one who lives in the fresh newness of life of those who are alive from the dead. 
Can you say the same thing? Can you, can you say, whatever it takes, I'll be the one who will follow Christ? Whether you're a young person here tonight, or an older person, or middle-aged, or whatever you are, have you really opened your heart and life to Christ? Does He control your life? Is He the Lord of your life? Not only Savior, but Lord. You'd better decide for Christ now because you never know when your moment is coming. Yes, that's natural death. Then there's spiritual death. You are a walking dead person now because spiritually you're already dead if you don't know Christ. Then there's eternal death. Some of the words of the New Testament used by Christ, not me, but Jesus, to describe the penalty of your sin is this. Lost, perish, condemned, punishment, hell, everlasting fire. I'm not going to try to interpret them for you. I'll just leave them from the mouth of Jesus. He's the one who used those words. You know what God did? God became a man. And that's who Jesus Christ was, the Son of the living God, born of the Virgin Mary. And God took the initiative in giving Christ. Christ took our sins on the cross. The Bible says he's been made to be sin for us. Think of it. Jesus was made to be sin. He became guilty of adultery. He became guilty of murder. He became guilty of everything that you and I have ever done or ever thought. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all, the scripture says. But on the third day he rose from the dead. And he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Have you done that? Are you sure of it? You say, what do I have to do? First, you have to repent of your sin. What does repentance mean? It means that you say in your mind, I have sinned and I'm sorry. But it also means that you are willing to change. And God will help you because you can't do it alone. It's too great a job. Somebody said that repentance means being sorry enough to quit. And then there's another thing, you must come by faith. You can't understand it all intellectually. You can't figure it all out. You just come in simple faith like a little child. There comes a moment in which the Spirit of God convicts you and calls you and speaks to you.